the first step in liver transplantation you have to do recipient hepatectomy that is you have to take out the diseased liver in recipient hepatectomy we do the total removal of the patient's native liver after dissection of hepatic ligament attachment and hyla structures infra vena cava should be encircled to ensure adequate blood control the donors from where we are going to get liver are either deceased or living donors you can appreciate here that the recipient hepatectomy has been started and in this picture the deceased liver has been removed and then ivc has been looped in deceased donor liver transplantation most commonly the whole liver is transplanted the cadaveric liver which has been harvested is prepared on the separate table we call it as back table preparation once the recipient body is ready the liver from the donor is brought to the table and anastomosis is started the order of anastomosis is first we will do a suprahepatic ivc anastomosis then we will do infrahepatic ivc anastomosis and then we will do the portal vein anastomosis and this has been asked as mcq in the past before completing the portal vein anastomosis the liver is flushed through the portal vein with normal saline at room temperature to remove preservative solution with effluent draining out through the lower cable anastomosis after doing this you complete the portal vein anastomosis and you remove the clamp and the portal vein blood flow is initiated to reperfuse the liver after doing this we will do the hepatic artery anastomosis and the bile duct anastomosis is the last one to be done so you can appreciate here the first one is anastomosis of the suprahepatic cava then the next one is anastomosis of the infrahepatic cava then you will do the portal vein anastomosis you will reperfuse the liver before completing the portal vein anastomosis you will flush the liver and then after doing this after reperfusion first you will do hepatic artery anastomosis and you will do a common bile duct anastomosis at the end you can see here that is the liver which has chronic liver disease it has been replaced with the new liver there are three different ways of doing a infra vena cava reconstruction the classical cava technique represents in which the recipient retrograde ivc is replaced with donor ivc which is what we discussed in the previous image you see the ivc has been completely replaced the recipient ivc has been replaced by the donor infra vena cava the other technique is piggyback technique so what are you doing in piggyback technique is here the confluence of three hepatic veins in the recipient is used to anastomose to the top of the donor ivc you can see here that the confluence of the three hepatic vein of the recipient has been anastomose to the upper end of the ivc of the donor okay and in this lower end you will tie off after flushing and the other method is side to side cavo cavo plasty in which the donor ivc is joined to the side of the recipient ivc you can appreciate here donor ivc has been joined to the recipient ivc by side to side anastomosis so remember there are three methods of ivc reconstruction the classical which is cavel replacement technique piggyback technique and side to side cavo cavoplasty when you are doing this technique you have to clamp both the parts and it can cause renal injury here you need not clamp the ivc completely similarly here you can partially clamp the ivc so the incidence of renal injury during transplantation is less in these two techniques compared to classical cable replacement technique there are couple of variations 
in DDLT. And what are these variations? You can do hepatic artery anastomosis first, very rarely, rather than doing a portal vein anastomosis. And after doing hepatic artery anastomosis, you will reperfuse the liver. And after reperfusion, you will do the portal vein anastomosis. Similarly, in children, where the transplant is being done for biliary atresia, that is absence of bile duct, or in patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis, where the bile duct is diseased, rather than doing the bile duct anastomosis, you will do the anastomosis with the rue loop of the jejunum, rue ny hepatic jejunostomy. That is what you will do in patients with biliary atresia or PSC. What is split graft in deceased donor liver transplantation? Here the deceased donor liver is divided and used in two recipients. The right lobe allograft without MHV is generally transplanted to a adult patient and the left part of the liver which is taken along with the infra vena cava and common hepatic artery is generally given to a children. So, you can see here how the splitting has been done. Right lobe allograft and then a left lobe graft which has IVC and the common hepatic artery. Coming to the immediate care after liver transplantation, optimal perioperative management is crucial for the success of liver transplantation and it is a major challenge to take care of the patient after liver transplantation. Patients are very sick preoperatively and then the patients who have undergone liver transplantation for ALF are extremely sick. The blood loss is considerable and management of coagulopathy intraoperatively and postoperatively is very important. Repeated coagulopathic assessment has to be done during transplantation and it has to be corrected with appropriate clotting factors. Many of the centers routinely use TEG or ROTEM for continuous coagulopathy assessment. Coming to the living donor liver transplantation, for living donor liver transplantation, you can use a right lobe or a left lobe or left lateral segment depending on the size requirement of the recipient. The right lobe graft which equates to 60 to 70 percent of total liver volume is the most commonly used graft for adult living donor liver transplantation. We need to know that there is a risk for donor in living donor liver transplantation. What is the global mortality risk? That is 1 in 300 to 500 for adult donor. And this is a picture in which a living donor liver transplant has been done. Coming to donor evaluation in living donor liver transplantation. All the donors will undergo graft volume measurement by CT volumetry and after doing that you will calculate graft weight to recipient weight ratio. Imagine the graft weight is 600 grams and the recipient weight is 60 kg. You calculate the ratio and GRWR will be 1 in this situation. You will also calculate a ratio of graft volume relative to the standard liver volume of the recipient which is called as GV divided by SLV. Ideal GRWR should be more than 0.8 and GB divided by SLV should be more than 35 and this can be asked as an MCQ. Remember that. Volumetry can be done by marking boundaries of the liver lobe on donor CT. This is called as manual technique and you can also do volumetry by using complex three-dimensional software that is Mavis and you can see in this figure a volumetry has been done on a donor CT. Donor evaluation in living donor liver transplantation, we need to remember that the remnant liver mass of the donor should be more than 30 percent of the whole liver. Imagine that the donor's whole liver is 1000 grams okay? and the right lobe is coming around 800 grams and what is remaining 200 grams that is 20 percent. This is not sufficient for the donor, you cannot proceed. 1000 gram and then this is 600 grams, this is 600 grams and this is 400 grams. 
सो रिमिनेंट इज फोर्टी परसेंट यू कैन प्रोसीड मिनिमम शुड बी मोर देन थर्टी परसेंट हियर इट इज फोर्टी परसेंट बट मिनिमम शुड बी मोर देन थर्टी परसेंट इफ द रिसिपियंट साइज इज लार्ज इमेजिन दैट यू हैव अ रिसिपियंट हु हैज वन ट्वेंटी के जी दे हैव अ डोनर ओके एंड द राइट लोब इज कमिंग अराउंड सिक्स हंड्रेड ग्राम्स यू कैनॉट प्रोसीड बिकॉज द the grwr is not adequate in this scenario 